Okay, so it all looks good, but uh, a lot of you made the same mistake. Okay, you did most of it right, but then you did too much. And I'm not gonna mark off for it, but this says factor. Okay, I want you to keep that in mind. Uh, so first we'll factor. How does it factor? Okay. All right, at this point, you should be done. Completely done. Right, you did too much. Okay, you probably said x equals negative 9, x equals negative 2. How do I know if this is correct? How do I know that this. Distributive property? How do I check and make sure that. Why does one of them have to be 0? Why? Zero. So what can you draw? Equation. What equation? You gotta distribute. No, I said what equation? This? Oh, no, you gotta <coughs> distribute and be equal to zero. Why does it have to be equal to zero? That's what we're doing. Are we? Does so. anybody see anything up here that tells you that it should be zero? Does it say that it equals zero? No, so then I don't know that it's supposed to equal zero. It's not specific. It doesn't say that it's supposed to equal anything. So this would be solving, okay? And if it started out as equal zero, that would be correct solutions. But it, can I solve this? What can I solve? What kinds of things can I solve? So equations, yeah, I can solve equations. This is not an equation, you can't solve a not equation, okay? This is just called a, a, an expression, just called an expression. If I set it equal to something, now I have an equation and I can uh, solve it, okay? Which we've done a lot of, we did it on the homework, did it during class, we solved a lot of equations. If this were equal to zero, then uh, getting negative nine and negative two solutions would be correct. But the problem is, it's not an equation. So you see the mistake? Don't solve things that aren't equations. You can't solve things that are not equations. Only equations can be solved. Then that's clear. We'll move on to today's topic. Um, it's more solving these equations, all right? With just a little bit of a you know, challenge to them. So let's get our heads out and get ready to go. Please excuse interruption. Barb Easley, please go to the band room. Barb Easley to the band room. Thank you. If this were an equation, it equals zero, then this week would equal zero, and then we set each of these equal to zero. This is a really crucial point that people skip over. They think, oh, I see a little shortcut here I can do, and then it winds up messing them up later. Don't just take the opposite of this and say that's what x is, and the opposite of this and say that's what x is. Do the work. Follow what I've been saying this whole time that we keep repeating over and over and over and over, that if this times this is equal to zero, then one of those must be equal to zero. I actually set it equal to zero and solve for x. Okay. Otherwise you're gonna have a hard time when the next stuff comes. All right, so what is something we should probably change about this equation? Does it equal to zero on one side? Get it equal to zero, okay. Then we do that by doing what? Subtract, Subtract 24 r squared plus 2r minus 24 equals 0. You guys take it from there. You got the negative in there, I'm going to see if you can handle that. Pardon the interruption. Okay, to uh, approach the 
approach this problem. The first thing that we're going to do, we're going to do this clever thing of after we have zero on one side, we're going to get the other side to look like what? Okay, so what will that look like when we get it to factor out? Um, R minus 4. R plus 6. Nice. You can always double check, and always, you should double check, just to make sure. Uh, probably the most common thing would be to get the positive and negative to mix up. And if we had a negative 6 and a positive 4, we'd wind up getting a negative 2R. So just be careful about that. So just multiply it out, double check, make sure. R squared. 6r, negative 4r, 6r minus 4r is 2r. Negative 4 times 6 is negative 24. So since r minus 4 times r plus 6, something times something equals 0, then we know what? One of them has to be 0. One of them has to be 0. One of them, that meaning one of these two things here. Mm -hmm. r minus 4 equals 0, which means r equals 4. r plus 6 equals 0, which means r equals negative 6. So that's the one that'll hitch be through in there. Sometimes it's not equal to zero. So make it equal to zero. All right. Handle that. Okay. Should we do another one or? We could. We're good? Or we could? Or we could. Or should? Uh, we're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. We are good. All right. So now uh, we'll go back to the days when it was just equal to zero. Uh, but I'm going to throw a new kind of a new wrench in the gears. Um, let's see. We're, basically, we're going to do where we have a quadratic equation where we don't have where we don't have one in front of the x squared. We have something else in front of the x squared. Okay. So we'll do the easiest version of that where we have. out in front is just going to be negative. Before we go it's too far and, and trying to guess and I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do this. So that it basically turns it back into something you've seen many times. Okay. Since there's a negative in front of there, have you ever had a negative in front of the x squared? That happened. I mean, in, in the last like couple classes where we've been factoring into two parentheses, we've never had that. We've always had just the one in front of the x squared, nothing else. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to take a negative one, put it outside the parentheses. So if I were to distribute the negative one, I would get this. So what would that make the inside of, of the parentheses here? So that it, like if I distribute the negative one, negative three. Well, let's just start with, with uh, the first term. What would this have to be so that negative times this is x negative x squared? Just x squared. What would this have to be so that negative 1 times this is 2x? Negative mm 3. -hmm. And what would this last guy have to be so negative times that is positive x? Negative 3. And now we're back to a kind of a, a quadratic. Well, these are called quadratics because we have an x squared. So we're back to that where it's just a positive one out in front and we can factor. We, we would leave the negative one here, but we would factor this part like normal. Okay, so we'd be factoring like normal except we have a negative one out there. Just like that. Okay? So go ahead and do just that. As we're factoring this part here, this negative one doesn't go anywhere, it just stays right out there. Because in order for this to work out, in order for it to be the factorization of this original. It has to multiply together to give the original back. So if we lose the negative 1, then it won't come out to be the way that it ought to be with the signs that it's supposed to have. All right, so we leave the negative 1 there. And how does this part factor? x negative 4 and x positive 2. OK. That's good. And don't let the negative 1 go anywhere, because in order to get this back, we'd have to multiply these together to get this. And then we have to distribute the negative 1 to get negative x squared plus 2x plus 8. All right? 
So the new little trick here is if there's a negative in front of the x squared, just take that negative out, so now we have the positive in front of the x squared like we like to have. Just for mm. negative x squared um, plus that one from beginning to end. Right, so the first thing we do is take that negative one out of every term and be left with what inside here? So if there's a negative in front, you know how to handle it, right? Back to that negative value. Okay. Now let's just real quick pretend that, like these were equations to start with, and we'll see what it looks like when we solve them. The same reasoning still applies, but don't don't let yourself get mixed up here. Still at equals zero. This equals zero. Here's the crucial part. We've got it. So that is, but now it's three things: something times something else times something else equals zero. So what has to be true? One of them has to be zero. Could negative one be zero? What do you think? Can negative one be zero? No, negative one is negative one. If negative one equals zero, we'd have some serious problems throughout the entire universe. If negative one equals zero, it can't. But could x minus four be zero? Given the right x? Yes, it could. Right? See how negative one doesn't have an x, so there's nothing we can do about negative one being negative one. It's just all being negative. So x minus 4 is equal to 0, maybe, or x plus 2 is equal to, zero, e equal to 0. That's it. That's all the possibilities. x equals 4, or x equals negative 2. So you see how this would go. Still using this same approach. Now we have something times something times something equals 0. Obviously, negative 1 times, or, or negative 1 can't be the 0, so one of these has to be the 0 x minus 6 equals 0, or x plus 3 equals 0, x equals 6, or x equals negative 3. Okay. Now, let's put something more tricky than just a negative in front of the x squared. Let's put an actual another number, like 2 or 3 or something out there. x squared minus 6w, or sorry, x, not w, x plus 1, plus 1, 5x squared minus 6 So here's a, a common thing to try, given we just had this problem with the negative 1 in front. We took the negative 1 out. So let's try taking the 5 out. Except for now we've got a problem. Right? 5 times x squared is 5x squared. That's great. But what's the problem now? It's going to be there again. It's going to be there again. What do you mean by that? Well, I would have to. If I, if I was using the idea of like, like the negative one, it means that I have to multiply this 5 through the parentheses and wind up with this. So that means that this next term, I'd have to be able to multiply 5 by this next term, and what should I get? Negative 6. Negative 6x. Is there a way to do that? 5 times something equals negative 6? That's the problem. This doesn't have a factor of 5. 5 is not a factor of 6. Now, if 5 were a factor of, of this number, then we might have something. But it's not. Um, okay. 
So let's go with this. Let, let's start out with our two factors the way we're used to. Right? And you think, where is this 5x squared going to come from when we multiply these two things together? The, the x's. This, so if we start at the normal, like with an x and an x, what would I get when I multiply it together? Just x times x is x squared, not 5x squared. How will we get 5x squared when we multiply these two together? We all got our notes out, ready to go. Look over there. Ready to go, these uh, Alright, so what can we do? Lizzie. Uh, Put a 5 right there. Will that give us 5x squared when we multiply? Yeah. Jason? Yes. 5x times x is 5x squared. Okay? So there's an idea. Maybe it'll work out, maybe it won't. Um, so we get the 5x times the x gives us the 5x squared. Okay, let's do like we did before. We know that we're supposed to get a positive 1. Where will this 1 come from? Um, okay, so uh, even more generally, this number, whatever is going to fill in that blank, times this number needs to be a 1. And the reason why I would say that this problem is pretty simple is because there's just not a lot of ways to multiply two numbers to get 5x squared. There's also not very many ways to multiply two numbers and get a 1. As Hudson said, either it could be positive 1 and positive 1 that multiply together to get positive 1, or two negatives. How do we know which one it is? Um, oh, we got a newcomer. Dimitri, what do you say? How do we know which one of these is correct? Is, is the factored form of this? Well, yes, because the answer I was looking for specifically was when we multiply these together, we should come up with that, right? That's the way it's always been for the last two classes we've been doing this, okay? So we need to be able to multiply the two factors together and get that original thing back. And which one does that? The one on the right. With the negative, yeah. Multiply it out, just to double check, 5x squared minus 5x, minus x, plus 1, combine like terms, exactly. Okay. See, there's just like a new level to it, yeah. So what do you want us to do with our homework? Your homework? I'll, uh, I'll collect it a little later. So there's this new challenge when we're factoring these uh, quadratic expressions are called quadratic when they have a power of two. There, okay. Get the special name quadratic. So there's this new thing. If there's something in front of the x squared, we have to incorporate that into our factors as well. Okay. So let's give that another try. Um, let me make one up. And I know it'll work out. Yeah. x squared plus uh, 10x plus 3. Okay. okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's start by putting our parentheses down. We know that we're going to have two parentheses. Two puts parentheses. And uh, let's concentrate on this first term here and this last one here. So where is this 3x squared going to come from? The two x's and Good, I like how you kept it kind of general. The two x terms, this x term and this x term, are going to multiply to give us 3x squared. Okay, but just x times x is not going to do it. So we need to include one. A 3x 
times the x will give us a 3x squared. OK, we look at the end and we say we know we're supposed to come out with a 3. Where will the 3 come from? 3 times 1. Or no, the 2 number. OK, good, general. These two numbers, whatever these two numbers are, we'll multiply to get 3. OK, but there's only one way to multiply to get 3, right? Well, at least with whole numbers. And that would be 3 times 1. OK? Do you think it makes a difference whether I put the 1 here and the 3 here, or the 3 here and the 1 here? Do you think that makes a difference? Um, no, because they're positive. So. It doesn't matter which one because they're positive? Yeah. OK. Let's multiply them, I'll leave it to you. Multiply this out, multiply this out, and see if it makes a difference. Multiply those two together, see what you get there. Multiply these two together, see what you get there. So we determine if it is different. Let's come out with two different things, we come out with two different things. In this arrangement, we come out with uh, x times x is 3x, or x times 3x is 3x squared. x times 3 is 3x. 1 times 3x is 3x and 1 times 3 is 3. So we get 3x squared plus 6x plus 3. Now what we were looking for. Close, but that's 6x instead of 10x. In this case, we get x times 3x, 3x squared. x times 1 is 1x. 3 times 3x is 9x. And 3 times 1 is 3. So we get 3x squared plus 10x plus 3. So That's the factorization of this polynomial. Fantastic question. Really good question. Uh, shall we do one kind of like that, or like just a little? Give us something super hard. Let's, let's give you something kind of, kind of challenging, will okay? It, will the challenging one be on our homework? Demetria, I swear to God. Everything will be on the homework. <laughs> Everything will be on the test. <laughs> Everything is hard. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. So what is, I said this would have an added challenge. What's the added challenge here? The 7x. Like the, you well, think the, the 7x two. is the challenging part? Well, I think the 2 is the challenging part. 2 is the challenging part. What do you think is the challenging part? There's more than one way to get 6x. So if you look at the, that's what, I, that's what my plan was. In these previous examples, with like the 3x squared, there's only one way to make 3, right? And in the example before that, there's only one way to multiply it and make 5x squared. But here, there's multiple ways to make 6. Right? It could be 6x times x, which I saw most people writing down. But it could also be what? 3x and 2x. 3x and 2x. I just need to realize that uh, as these numbers have more factorizations, it gets to be more challenging. But the good news here is that when we, as we have in the previous two examples, we go to the last number here and say, well, that's a 2. How do I multiply and make 2? 1 times 2. There's only one way. So, well, I can try 1 and 2. As we learned before, though, that's different from having a 2 and 1. Check that one out. We can do 3x plus 1 and 2x plus 2, or maybe it's 3x plus 2 times 2x plus 1. But the good news is that's those are the only possibilities. Those are the only factors that give us a 6x squared at the beginning and a 2 at the end. We just have to check against what's in the middle. Dimitri? I'm going to say it's the bottom one. You're going to say it's this one right here? This one out of the here. Okay. 
the limb of having already tried. Yeah. <laughs> so you may have run through all four of these, or maybe you're lucky and you got this one first or second time around. It's uh, it's a little bit luck right now for you to get the the uh, the trick that I will show you. It takes a little more familiarity just with what we're doing here. So let's try it. Let's try this last one. That's what Dimitri says it's going to be. 6x squared plus 3x plus 4x plus 2. We knew we were going to get 6x squared. We knew we were going to get 2. That's how we designed these two factors to work. And we also get 3x plus 4x is 7x, just like we wanted. So we factored this polynomial in here and got these are the factors. If you multiply any of those other three, you'll get three things that have a 6x squared at the beginning and a 2 at the end, but something other than 7x in the middle. Should we try another one like that, or should we increase the difficulty level? Increase the Close enough. But I can't breathe the fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Problem solved. Okay. Let's increase the difficulty. Just a little bit. Wait, is the bump so below? Is that going to be? I don't know. It belonged to the guy who, who got the card before me. Why is the bump so tricky? You are like breathing? Okay. All right, here we go. New challenge. Uh, 6x squared uh, plus 19x plus 10. So as we've hopefully been learning, we're, we're concentrating on this first term and this last term. We know that when we build these two factors, that the first two, the x terms here, have to multiply to make 6x squared. And then the second, you know, fill in the blanks, I guess these two numbers here, would have to multiply to make 10. But there's lots of ways, well, there's lots of different combinations, because there's more than one way to multiply and get 6. There's more than one way to multiply it and make 10. And then even when you find those factor possibilities, then when you switch around the order of them, what I mean by that is like, you could put the one here, the two here, or the two here, and the one here, it makes a difference. So there's all these different possibilities, all these different combinations, right? How many different ways are there to multiply to make six? What can we multiply? Three and two. Three times two and? Six and one. Six times one, so there's that. But then <coughs> each of these can go with any combination of the factors of 10. How can we factor 10? Two and five times 10, two times five. It's nice, I gave you numbers that only factor two different ways, okay? But these two can go with these two, and then the order of these can switch. That's one possibility, and here's another possibility, times two, so that's four so far, and this one, likewise, uh, there's two there, and then there's two more, so there's four more, so there's eight possibilities. For now, you're just going to have to kind of guess and check, just for now, okay? So we'll start with 3 and 2. We could go 3x and 2x, and then to multiply and get 10, we could do plus 1 plus 10, or we could do 3x plus 10 times 2x plus 1. And then we could do 3x plus 2 times 2x plus 5, or 3x plus 5 times 2x plus 2. So those are all the combinations, just if we lock down 3x and 2x. So now they've got the 6 and the 1. 6x plus 1 times 1x plus 
plus 10. 6x plus 10 times x plus 1. 6x plus 5 times 1x plus 2. 6x plus 1, or sorry, 2 times x plus 5. There's four more combinations just where we let the, the x's be 6x and 1x. Okay. How do we know which one's right? Make sure you've done it, you figured it out. Oh, I haven't done it. Well, I've done it and tried to do it, but Matt can get a number like 32 and 24. Yeah, and imagine if. You can see how the combinations increase really quickly, not uh, exponentially, but really quickly. Yes? Okay. I'm pretty sure it's this third one down there. This one here? Yeah. Anybody else get the same? Got it? Really got it? Right in. And other people working oh, on it. I did do that actually. X plus two times two oh, x plus five. And since there's so many different possibilities, and since you want to go through them and, and you know find the correct factorization, uh, you want to make sure you're not making any mistakes so that you don't count one out that actually was the right one. Right? So take it slow and make sure that, it, that you're doing every step correct. So we'll do this one. That's going to be six x squared plus fifteen x plus four x plus 10, and that works. 6x squared plus 19x plus 10. So you see the challenge. There's, there's, when there's several different ways to factor this guy here, and several different ways to factor this guy here, it can be quite a challenge. You just have to try out all the possibilities. Let me throw another one up there. See if we can kind of roll it all into one. Oh my god. So tip here before you get started yeah. so that it's not too crazy. Remember what we did about this negative in front? Yes. There's a negative in front. Remember there's a negative out in front of the x squared? What did we do with it? Put it on the outside. Negative on the outside. So we'll put it on the outside because we like the first thing to be positive. That just makes, you know, it makes things more consistent. It's not that it's impossible to do this way, but it's more consistent if we have a positive here. So then we'll have 12x squared plus 17x plus 6. So now we can work on this and just leave the negative one out of it. Move it over there. Okay, once you pick up on these patterns and, and what it takes, the only thing you're missing is to try lots of different combinations. Okay? We could have parentheses. And we know that this times this should be 12x squared, so that could be 12x times 1x. It could be 2x and 6x. It could be, we went out of room. It could be uh, 3x times 4x. So three different possibilities just for the factors of 12. And then we have to consider the 6. Okay? So, Six, we could do uh, two, three, but then again, with the same 12x and 1x, we could do three and two. Okay, and with the 12x and the 1x, we could also do one and six, but then we could also do six and one. 
basically I had to go through all of these and repeat those factors of six for all of these. How many possibilities is that? A lot. Don't give me a lot. When I... 12 possibilities. Yes, 12, because there's, there's three different possibilities for the factors of 12, okay? And then the factors of six can be done four different ways. Three times four is 12. Okay. There's nothing to it but to just plug away. Anybody figure out which one it is? Give me three. So it's three x plus two. And so you, did, you got the three x and the four x combination. Right. And you did and two and three. And three, this one works? Yes. So this one over here. Okay. And there's just, right now, there's no other way than knowing all the different combinations and trying them all. Okay. And I want you to do it that way because I want you to know what we're really looking for. Okay. And another thing could seem kind of like a magic trick. So we're going to wait on that. Right. Now, now that we know how to factor these guys and remembering that if there's a negative, let's factor that negative out. Okay. Now we know how to factor equations in this form, right? Don't we? Of course we do, because it's the same as it's always been. If this is equal to zero, then what if it's not equal to zero? Then it's not relevant. No, it's not. Then it's not relevant. If it's not equal to zero, get it equal to zero. Right? By moving everything that's on this side over to the other side. So get it equal to zero. So it's equal to zero. So this is equal to zero. We found the correct factorization. This is equal to zero. Here's an important thing. If this times this equals zero, then what do we know? One of them has to be zero. One of them has to be zero. Either this one has to be zero, or this one has to be zero. Subtract two on both sides. Divide by three. Subtract three on both sides. Divide by four. And we have both the solution. Now, I'm going to be really doubtful that if I gave you this equation to start with, you would have guessed that the answer might be negative three fourths. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And forget about negative three fourths. There's definitely more complicated answers than negative three fourths. Negative three fourths is, is a kind because it's a fraction. At least it's a fraction. It's a whole number over a whole number. What if it's some weird decimal? some weird square root of some number. You'll never guess that. Okay. We're building up to our, our ability to solve for pretty crazy out there solutions. So we have this new approach, factoring out these things that uh, basically have a class where something other than one is in front of x squared. If it's negative, remember to factor out that negative. And then all that's left to do is try all of the different combinations of all the factors of the first and the last term. What's such great? What's that? I'll show you some other time. Probably next time. Okay. But for now, we'll just stick it out here. Okay. Let's call that good. If there's a if there's a negative uh, coefficient, coefficient uh, of x squared, so if x squared has a coefficient that's negative, a, a negative number times x squared, factor the negative out before you start. Just like the example we just had. Just like that one. Factor the negative out first. Okay. If
if you're solving an equation, uh, okay, let's say that this represents the, the thing you're trying to factor, and it's equal to something that is not zero, okay? Not zero. Then the thing you need to do is make this zero. You've got to make that other side equal to zero. If the other side isn't equal zero, then all this factoring does not help at all. If it doesn't equal zero, even if you factor it, even if it just happens by coincidence to be factorable, it's not going to help you because you'll get it factored. It'll be A times B equals something that's not zero. And then we don't have that little A times B equals zero trick where A has to be zero or B has to be zero. I don't know what A or B have to be if this is not zero. Okay. Make sure it equals zero. And you're basically going to like add or subtract to cancel the things that are on the side. And move over here. And combine and one polynomial. Equals so only zero. factor out the negative just like, just like the x squared one? Only if it's in front of the x squared. OK. Yes? So on the quiz the next time, is this going to be about the other stuff? The other stuff. Not this stuff. And can I have a notebook? Yes. Just write a pass note. Sorry.